Hey everyone, let's take a look at number 13 in section 6.3. We're going to find the volume of rotation for the region enclosed by the following graphs. Y equals x cubed plus 2, y equals 4 minus x squared, and x equal 2. And then we've got a figure down here. Um, and we're going, to rotate, uh, we're going to rotate that region about the line y equal negative 7 and get that solid shape um, and find the volume of it. So they don't label the curves, but hopefully you recognize that this is the curve of y equals x cubed plus 2, and this is the uh, parabola opening downward y equal 4 minus x squared. Now we do want to find that point of intersection there. Um, so when we equate x cubed plus 2 equal to 4 minus x squared, uh, solve that equation for x. I'm going to add x squared to both sides and subtract 4. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. So we've got this set equals 0. Now this is not something that we're going to be able to factor, right? Because there's no uh, common factor other than 1 or negative 1 that we want to pull out. And um, you know, this is not x squared plus something x minus 2. I can't factor it as a uh, product of two binomials. So um, you know, go back to uh, polynomial equations. What can we do? We can try and see if we can find a zero. Um, you can use the rational zeros test, uh, which the coefficient of x cubed is one. The constant term is negative two. So negative two divided by one is uh, negative two. So, so the uh, factors, uh, the zeros of this polynomial um, rather are going to be um, uh, factors of negative two, all right, negative two. So that would be plus or minus one or plus or minus two. Well, if you check all those options, you do actually get a, a rational root, and that is one, because if I let x be one, what do I get? One cubed plus one squared, that's one plus one is two, minus two is zero. So one is a solution, which means x minus one is a factor. So I can factor this, um, actually don't need to in this problem, but I'm going to go and factor it anyway. And, uh, you know, just to review, if you use synthetic division, you can do that as well. Uh, but I'm going to factor, um, I'm going to divide, do polynomial long division, x minus 1 divided into x cubed plus x squared. I put in a placeholder of 0x. Of course, that's just 0 minus 2. So I'm going to divide that by x minus 1. x goes into x cubed, x squared times, multiply x squared times x. Uh, is x cubed, not x squared. Sorry about that. x cubed, x squared times x, x cubed, x squared times 1 is uh, minus 1, really, is negative x squared. And then what do we do? We subtract x cubed minus x cubed to 0. Be careful here. x squared minus a negative x squared. x squared plus x squared is 2x squared. Bring down your 0x. x goes into 2x squared. 2x times, 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times 1 minus 2x. Subtract 2x squared minus 2x squared is 0. 0x zero minus a negative 2x, so be careful. 0 minus negative 2 is positive 2x. Bring down our negative 2. x goes into 2x 2 times. 2 times x minus 1 is 2x minus 2. Subtract, we get 0 as we should. The remainder should be 0. You can also do synthetic division if you know how to do that, but basically that means this, this factor is x minus 1 times x squared plus 2x plus 2. Now this is prime, uh, can't be further factored. And if we think of the quadratic formula to find out when is this equal to zero, well, b squared minus 4ac, b is two, two squared is four, four times a is one, c is two, I get um, four minus eight, which is negative four, which means there's no real roots, right? We'll, we'll have the, 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 the roots of this um, quadratic uh, degree two polynomial are um, imaginary. Or, or complex, non-real complex. Okay, bottom line is x equal 1 is the only real solution. Um, and uh, so so literally, this means this point of inter intersection is where x is equal to 1. Um, and the, the y value there, in that case, I plugged in is 3. That's the that's the, the, that's the y value right there, 3. Of course, this is uh, 2 when uh, x is 0. This is 2 and um, and 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 three, and then this is four. When x is zero, we get four. Okay, but that point of intersection is x equal one. And then remember, the line x equal two, well, if I plug in x equal two into the, the function y equals x cubed plus two, I get uh, 10 as my output, so two comma 10. And then for y equal four minus x squared, if I plug in two, I get uh, four minus two squared, four minus four is zero. So that means when x is two, 
the uh, graph of y equals 4 minus x squared is 0, so it's right on the x-axis there. That's x equal 2. And then up here, that height is going to be at 10, uh, as we computed. Bottom line is we, we can see the, the region enclosed by these three graphs, the graph of y equals x cubed plus 2, graph of 4 minus x squared, and the graph of this vertical line, which is x equal 2, is this region here. Okay, so taking that region, and we're going to rotate it right about the line y equal negative 7, so way down here. So I'm going to, the, the way I'm going to do this is not to use the uh, shell method, but the disk washer method. And the reason, the reason that is, is this region is vertically simple, right? Any vertical line will have the same top and the same bottom function. If I try and use the shell method, I would be integrating with respect to y, and notice, uh, it's not horizontally simple because horizontal lines here have the blue curve uh, and x equal to as the boundaries. And then up here, red curve and x equal to as the boundary. So we could, you could do this, but you just have to set up two separate integrals. So it's, so it can be done with the shell method, but it's just um, a little more intensive, I guess, a little more work. A little bit easier to do it with um, with respect to the x-axis then. And in that case, if I integrate, I'm looking at a, vertical rectangle, it comes about and back into the page down here. And I hope you see that we're going to get uh, washers for our cross sections. So the way I do this, the inner radius I call little r, the outer radius I call big R. Um, and the area then that I'm looking at is the big circle uh, area minus the little circle area. So factoring out the pi, pi um, big R squared minus little r squared. So that's our cross section. We're going to integrate from x equal 1 to x equal 2. So what's our um, inner uh, radius, our little r? is from the axis x equal negative 7 to the bottom of this, uh, the bottom of this. So this from here to here is our little r. And so how do we find the uh, value of y? Uh, we take the top part, which is at what? y equal what? 4 minus x squared minus the bottom part, which is at y equal negative 7. So I've got 4 minus x squared minus a negative 7 becomes 4 plus 7 or 11 minus x squared. That's the value of little r. And notice that makes sense. When x is 0, the value of little r, sorry, when x is 0, when x is 1, the value of little r would be uh, from here to here. Remember the height of this we said at 1 was 3. And so from negative 7 up to 3, that's a total of 10, right? 3 plus 7, 10, right? And notice I get that when I plug in 1 in here. 11 minus 1 squared is 11 minus 1 is 10. And then by the time I get to 2, uh, that little r is going to be uh, just 7, right? Because that point is right at 2 comma 0 on the curve y equal 4 minus x squared. So I'm going to get 7 when I plug in 2. And notice that's what I get when I plug in 2. 11 minus 2 squared, 11 minus 4 is 7. Okay, the big R is going to be from our axis of rotation. I won't draw all the way to the top of the rectangle, which is on this curve, x cubed plus 2. So it's x cubed plus 2 minus a negative 7. x cubed plus 2 minus a negative 7 gives us x cubed plus 9. Okay, or again, another way of thinking about it, uh, the distance from between my fingers here is x cubed plus 2. The distance here is 7, right, from 0, from 0 to negative 7 to 7. So 7 plus x cubed plus 2 gives me x cubed plus 9. Okay, so that's all the setup, all right? There's no calculus at all that we've really done. Now we do calculus, which is to integrate, right, this cross-sectional area from x equal 1 to x equal 2, right? Remember, we're integrating from x equal 1 to x equal 2. And so it's big R squared minus little r squared. So we got some algebra to do. I go ahead and expand x cubed plus 9. All right, I get this. Expand 11 minus x squared. I get this. Distribute this negative through, right? Changes all the signs there. Combine any like terms, which there's only constant terms, but I've got x to the sixth minus x to the fourth, 18x cubed minus a negative plus 22x squared, and then I have 81 minus 121 is negative 40. So that's what I'm integrating. The antiderivative is 1 7th x to the 7th minus 1 5th x to the 5th. Uh, 18 fourths or 9 halves 
x cubed, uh, and this is 22 thirds x cubed. No, sorry, that should be x to the fourth. Sorry, 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 I'm just going too fast. <laughs> that should be 18 <laughs> x to the fourth over four, nine halves x to the fourth. This is 22 thirds x cubed, and then the antiderivative of 40 is 40 x. Okay. Uh, a little bit of uh, arithmetic, to, arithmetic to do here, <laughs> plug in x equal 2, plug in x equal 1, subtract. You can use technology to help, perhaps, uh, but your simplified fraction is 19,063 divided by 210. Don't forget, times the pi. And there is our uh, volume for this solid, which I'm not going to try and draw, but um, hopefully this is helpful.